Hello and welcome to this Dr. Frost Maths video on Key Stage 5 Solutions of Quadratic Equations. Now most of this is going to be a recap of what you might have done earlier at school, but there are kind of harder types of questions uh, which we'll explore uh, towards the end. But the key with solving quadratic equations is twofold. It's firstly to get zero on one side, and it's secondly to factorise what you then have on the other side of the equation. And by the way, a quadratic equation is just one in which you've got uh, an x squared term and then possibly an x term and possibly a constant term as well, and no other terms. So let's look at this first one. We've already got zero on one side. So it's then just a case of factorising what we have. Now we can see that we have a common factor here and here of x, so we factorise it out. And then x times what is x squared? Well, it's x. And x times what is 4x? Well, it's 4. And then we say, well, we've got a product of two things is equal to zero. With two numbers times to give zero, then we know at least one of them had to be zero. So if it was this thing that was zero, then x is zero. Or we have x plus four is zero, and try and do this in your head. What plus four gives you zero? Well, it's minus four. So x is minus four. And the quick way of doing it is just to negate whatever number's there. So if that was plus four, you get a solution of minus four. If that was minus four, that would become plus four when you negate it. Question two, solve this. Again, we've got zero on one side, so we just need to factorize this. Now remember, to factorize a quadratic where we've got x squared plus something x plus something, we need to find two numbers which add to give the middle number, plus four, and times to give the last number, minus five. Well, five's prime, which makes it easy, and we can see that those two numbers are plus five and minus one, because five plus minus one is four, and five times minus one is minus five. So do you remember that we factorize with two brackets, and we use those two numbers, so it's x plus five, our first number, and x minus one, our other number. And if we were to expand this out, it would give us this. So we do the same thing as before. The quick way, just negate that, we get x is minus five, and negate the minus one to get plus one as our other solution. Question three. Now this one isn't in the same form as the others. We don't have zero on one side. So we're gonna to have to expand this out and make sure that we subtract some stuff to get zero on one side. So if we expand that out, we get six x squared, minus 5x, and then I'm going to subtract that 6 to get minus 6 equals 0. Now you can factorise this in whatever way you see fit. I'm going to split the middle term. So remember that we need to find two numbers which add to give the middle number again, so minus 5, just like we did up here, but they've got to times to give. Now because there's a number in front of the x squared, we've got to find two numbers which times to give the first times the last number, 6 times minus 6, which is minus 36. Now, what two numbers times give minus 36 and add to give minus 5? Well, I believe it's minus 9 and plus 4. So we split the middle term, we say, into minus 9x plus 4x and just fill in the rest. And then do you remember that we just underline each of these two halves and then factorise each half independently? So what is common to this and this? Well, 3x, so 3x and then 3x times what is this? 3x times 2x gives that, and 3x times minus 3 gives minus 9x. And then we leave a space, duplicate the bracket, and then what times that gives you this? Well, it's plus 2. And if that doesn't expand to give this, then something's gone wrong. And then finally, our two brackets are 2x minus 3, and anything that's outside that, so 3x plus 2. So we've got 3x plus 2, and uh, 2x minus 3 equals 0. And we can do what we did before, so 3x plus 2 equals 0, and then solve that. But the quick way is to negate that, so x is minus 2, but we have to divide by whatever's in front of the x, so minus 2 thirds, and this one, similarly, negate that plus 3 over that 2, so it's 3 over 2. And those are the solutions to this equation. Question four is an applied one, determine x. We've got right angle triangle here, which means we can use Pythagoras theorem. So remember that that squared plus that squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So x squared plus the other shorter side squared, noting the use of brackets, equals the hypotenuse squared. Then let's just expand out. The quick way of expanding out this bracket is the first thing squared 
plus the product of the two things times two, so x times one is x times two is two x, plus the second thing squared, and then a similar thing here, that's x squared plus two times that times that is four x, plus the second thing squared. And then let's just collect everything on one side, because we need zero on one side. Uh, we can subtract x squared from both sides first, and then there's more x squared on the left, so I'm gonna get everything to the left. So we've got the x squared. If we minus the 4x, we get minus 2x. And if we minus 4, we get minus 3. So we've now got 0 on one side. We now factorise, and that will factorise to x minus 3x plus 1. And so the solutions are x is 3 and x is minus 1. This one here, it's not at the moment in sort of quadratic form, but my instinct, whenever you have a fraction in an equation, is just to multiply through by any denominator you see. So I've got a denominator of x here, so I'm going to just multiply everything by x. So multiplying both sides by x, we then get x squared plus 6 equals 5x, we need 0 on one side, so we do x squared minus 5x plus 6 is 0, and then we factorise, and we can see the two solutions, x is 3 or x is 2. And let's just test them through the original equation, if we use 3, 3 plus 6 over 3, that's 3 plus 2, is indeed 5, and if x is 2, 2 plus 6 over 2, that's 2 plus 3, again is 5, so it worked. Now question 6. Solve 2x squared minus x minus 5 equals 0, giving your solutions to three significant figures. The clue there is your, your solutions to three significant figures. That tells us solutions for x are not going to be nice, so we can't factorise it. We're going to have to use the quadratic formula. So as you remember, we just identify the a, b and c. So the a here is 2. The b here is minus 1. There's an implicit 1 there. So b is minus 1 and c is minus 5. And then the quadratic formula, which you should have memorised is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and if you haven't seen the quadratic formula before I have another video on it. So we just sub those numbers in minus minus 1 is plus 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 1 squared is 1. Don't bother writing minus 1 squared in here you just know it in your head. Minus 4 times a 2 times minus 5 all over uh, 2a, so 2 times 2 is 4. And then remember the plus or minus means you get two solutions, one of this when we use the plus and one this expression when we use the minus. And then we can just plug that into our calculator. But to be honest, you should just be using the equation solver. So if you've got a class with or the old silver calculator, it will have a quadratic solver. You just go to menu, then equations, then you want polynomial because a quadratic is a polynomial. Polynomial degree, a quadratic is of degree 2 because the highest power is 2. And then it will ask you for the x squared, the x and the constant terms. So we just put in the 2, minus 1, minus 5. And it will spit out the two solutions. So we can see it's 1 plus or minus root 41 over 4. And if we press the SD key, we get uh, 1.85. Or you press a down key, and then we also get minus 1.35. That's the three significant figures. Now also, if you press down, you actually get the x and y value of the turning point of the quadratic, y equals 2x squared minus 1x minus 5. And that's really useful if you want to sketch your quadratic, because you can draw in that turning point. In this case, it's a quarter minus 41 over 8. But we don't need that for now. Now this one is a bit harder, solve x plus root x equals 6. And this is the more sort of A level E of uh, these questions we have here. And it can come up, I have seen what looks like quadratics, but quadratic in root x rather than in x. Now there's two ways of doing this. We could either try and square both sides, um, or the best way is to actually make a substitution. So if we do let y is equal to root x, then this actually turns into a quadratic, because this is a quadratic in terms of root x. So if we sub that in, if y is root x, and note that y squared would be x, so that x there is y squared, plus root x, well root x is y, and um, equals 6. I'm just going to minus a 6 to get it over to the other side. Now this is a quadratic at this point, so we can factorise in the same way So that means that y is either minus 3 
before y is 2. But we said that y was equal to root x. So either root x is minus 3 or root x is equal to 2. Now this one is not possible because the square root of a number cannot give you a negative number. So we're going to put a strike through that. But root x could be equal to 2. So if we square both sides, we just get x is equal to 4. And there we go. That is the solution to this. 4 plus root 4, that's 4 plus 2, is indeed equal to 6. And that is the only solution of this equation. Now question 8, we've got 3 plus root x plus 2 is equal to x. Now again, we could square both sides. If we try that, um, I'm going to get the root on its own first. So root x plus 2 is equal to x minus 3. Then, to get rid of that square root, I'm going to square both sides. So x plus 2 is equal to that squared, which is x squared minus 6x plus 9. And then get everything on the right-hand side. So x squared minus the x, we got minus 7x. Subtract the 2, we got plus 7 equals 0. And then we're going to have to use our quadratic solve at this point. And that gives us x is equal to 7 plus or minus root 21 over 2. Now, strictly speaking, we should substitute each of these values into here to see that it's a valid solution, because it's possible when we squared both sides that we introduced a false solution. Now, the alternative way we could have done this is to uh, make a substitution. So let's make y equal to the square root of x plus 2, because we've got that thing here. That means that y squared is equal to x plus 2. And also that means that that x there is going to be y squared minus 2. So now we can rewrite this. So 3 plus root x plus 2, which was just y, is equal to x. Well, we can see that x is y squared minus 2. And then if we get it all on one side, we have y squared minus y. And then subtract the 3, we've got minus 5 equals 0. And then let's use our quadratic solver. We get y is equal to 1 plus or minus root 21 over 2. But y was equal to root x plus 2. So we then going to do root x plus 2 is equal to 1 plus or minus root 21 over 2. And then we would have to square both sides and minus 2. But I think that this particular method in this case was actually easier to isolate the root on its own first and then square both sides. We could have also used that technique for the first one. We could have isolated this root x by subtracting x first, so root x was equal to 6 minus x, and then squaring both sides.